Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at similar shapes that involve area and volume and we're going to have a look at when they involve some ratios. Now for most of these questions we're going to be having a look at different methods so you will need a calculator as well as we will look at non-calculator and calculator methods. Now all we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a couple of exam style questions, we're going to have a look at three in total, but in order to have a full look at this, obviously I've done a full video on this that I'm going to link in the description, so do make sure that you check that one out maybe before, or obviously if you you're stuck at any point throughout this video don't forget that, that one is there to describe all of the processes that we're going to discuss here. Now for this first question that we have a look at is so solid A and solid B are mathematically similar. Now it doesn't give us a picture of those but you can always feel free to draw one which I may do in a sec. It says the ratio of the surface area of solid A to the surface area of solid B is 4 to 9 and then it says the volume of solid B is 405 show that the volume of solid A is 120. Now obviously we've got the ratio involved here as it gives us a ratio of their surface areas. It then asks us to look at the volume of those shapes. Okay, and it gives us the volume of solid B and it wants us to show that the volume of solid A is 120. So if we actually have a look at this and thinking about how we would do this in a non-calculator method, we need to move between the surface area ratio up to the volume ratio. Now if we have a look at this and if we label this we've got the surface area and we have A and we have B. And at the moment that's in the ratio 4 to 9. Now to get from surface area back to the volume, which, which is what we're looking for here, we're going to have to first go back to the length. So in order to get from our surface area to our length we need to square root it. Okay, And that's how we move between our, our, our um, similar shape ratios here. So to start with we're going to go to the length. Okay, So I'm just going to write that down as L. And to get there, we're going to square root both those numbers. So the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, that gives us 2 to 3. So our length ratio here is 2 to 3. Now from there, we want to get to the volume. Now I'm going to label this volume. And to get from length to volume, we need to cube those numbers. So to get our ratio here for the volume, we're going to cube them both. So we're going to cube 2 and we're going to cube 3. Now the cube of 2 is 8 and the cube of 3 is 27. So in order to look at the ratio of their volumes we're going to need to use the ratio 8 to 27. Now obviously what I'm looking at here is a non-calculator method and we will discuss a calculator method as well but I think this is quite a nice non-calculator question. So let's have a look. Now it says that the volume of B is 405 and the volume of A is 120. Now obviously we can tell just by looking at those that A is the smaller shape here, which we can also tell from their surface areas as it has that number 4 rather than the 9. But if we were to draw a little picture here, we can imagine a smaller shape, obviously I'm drawing a 2D shape here, but it's a 3D shape if we're looking at volume, and we have the larger shape there as well. So we've got this one as A and this one as B. Now at the moment it says the volume of solid B is 405, so let's label that 405 centimeter cubed. And if we align that with our ratio, which we've got over here, 8 to 27, the 405 there is below the 27. And what we're trying to find is what this number is that will go under the 8. Obviously it's told us that number, but the language there says show that the volume is 120. So we actually have to show our working out in order to show that it's definitely 120. Now looking at that, all we need to think about is how do we get from 27 to 405, or in other words, what have we multiplied by to get there? And in order to figure that out, we need to do 405 divided by 27. Now obviously you can use some bus stop for that, obviously if it's non-calculator, if we have a calculator for this it's nice and easy, but this can actually be done non-calculator. So let's see how many 27s go into 405. Now 27 goes into 40 once. And there'll be a remainder there of 13, so that's going to take us up to 135 for the next one. How many times does 27 go into 135? Not the nicest there. We could write out some of the 27 times table, but actually it ends in a 5, and that gives us a bit of a hint that it is 5. Always check that, but it is actually 15 times there, and it's 5 times that 27 goes into 135. So that means we've multiplied by 15 in this ratio. So in order to get from the 8, that part of the volume, down to our actual volume here, we need to times by 15. And 8 times 15, again, we could show that on the working out. 8 times 15 gives us an answer of 120. And there we go. We've shown there that the volume is going to be 120 centimetre cubed. 
And that's enough to show you're working out there. We've shown that we've moved between the ratios there from surface area to length and then from length to volume. And that then we've shown within that volume ratio how we got from 27 to 405 and therefore replicating that with the eight. Now that's one method that you could use, non-calculator. There is actually a calculator method that we could use here as well, although this particular question was a non-calculator question with some quite nasty little divisions and multiplications in there. But let's have a look here at a calculator method. Now again, this is what we're trying to show, that we get from 405 to 120. Now what you can do is you can just take this ratio and just like normal with similar shapes, we can do the big number divided by the little one. So nine divided by four, and we're going to do this on the calculator, so I'm going to type that in. 9 divided by 4 gives us 2.25. So 2.25, and that is our surface area scale factor. Okay, so we're looking at the scale factor now. Now again, to move from surface area up to volume, we're going to have to first figure out our length. So again, same process, we're going to square root that. And if we square root that, which again I'm going to do on the calculator, we get 1.5. So 1.5, and that is our length scale factor. Now we want to get from length back to volume. So you can see it's a very similar process. It's always the same way moving between them, but we're going to have to cube 1.5. So again, I'm just going to do that on the calculator, 1.5 cubed, and that gives me 3.375, and that's my volume scale factor. Now in order to use that, all I need to do is I need to look at which one I have, and in this case we have the bigger volume and if we're going down to the smaller one we need to divide by that scale factor so divide by 3.375 and let's just check that on the calculator 405 divided by 3.375 and that in fact does give us 120. Obviously we're doing this on the calculator so we don't need to show our working out for that but we do need to show here what we've actually done we've divided by 3.375 and obviously just confirming that gives us the right answer on the calculator. So we can do that either way, um, up to you which method you choose, if you have a calculator or if it's a calculator question. Obviously if it's non-calculator though, it's more than likely you're going to have to use that method that I used previously. And actually that method can be used, or this method that I've just done can be used non-calculator as well. Obviously just as long as this number here comes out as a whole number. We wouldn't really be expected to square root 2.25 and cube it without a calculator, but that is, that is another method that can be used, even if it is non-calculator, just depending on the numbers there. But there we go, there's an example of one of these questions. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so we have a very similar styled question here for our second question. It says two solid cones are mathematically similar. Cone A has a volume of 120 and cone B has a volume of 960. Work out the ratio of the surface area of cone A to the surface area of cone B. Now in order to work out a ratio here, all we really need to figure out is how much bigger one is than the other. And again, we're going to take this approach where, as a non-calculator method to start with. And in fact, our method that I'm actually going to use here is going to be very similar even if we were using a calculator. Now to figure out the volume scale factor, as we've been given the volume of both of these, I'm going to take the big one and divide it by the little one, just like I did on the last question with the ratios. So I'm just going to draw a little diagram here just so we can kind of visualise this a bit as we have cone A, which is our smaller cone, and cone B there, which is our larger cone. So if we take the bigger one and divide it by the smaller one, we're going to do 960 divided by 120. And again, if you didn't have a calculator right now, you could do 96 divided by 12 and just take your time with that. But that comes out as 8. So if we think about what we've got here, we have our volume scale factor, and that's come out as 8. Now in order to get from volume to area is what we're looking. We're going to have to, instead of cubing to get from length to volume, we're going to have to cube root to get from volume back to length. Okay, So to get from volume back to length, we're going to cube root. And the cube root of 8 should be able to be done without a calculator. The answer there is 2. It's 2 times 2 times 2. From length, we can get back to area, as we're being asked about an area scale factor here. And to get from area um, from length, we're going to square that, just like we did before when we square rooted in the other direction. Now two squared is four. So in other words, our scale factor in terms of the lengths is four. Now a scale factor of four means that one is four bigger than the other. So in terms of writing this as a ratio, if cone A was one, cone B would be four. And that is our surface area ratio. 
And we could have done a nice ratio with any of them. When it comes to the length, it would have been one to two, as our scale factor there was two for the length. And when it came to the volume, our, scale, our ratio there in terms of that scale factor would have been one to eight, okay? So in terms of their length, the lengths are twice the size from, a, from a, that B is to A. The areas are four times the size from B from, from A to B. And the volume is eight times the size, again, going from A to B. So that's how we're going to approach these questions. Obviously, it's all about moving between those scale factors to get from length to area u square, to get from length to volume u cube, and then we do the reverse going back either way. But when we're given areas and volumes, we always have to go back to length, and length is our key one there because that's like our little bridge to get between the two scale factors of area and volume. So there we go, there's another the question. Very similar to the last one, not as much working out there, but again, just thinking about that in a slightly different way maybe. But in, all, in both scenarios there, whether we had a calculator or didn't have a calculator, we would be doing 960 divided by 120. You could, to be fair, you could actually write these as a ratio. You could write that their ratios at the moment are 120 to 960 and try and simplify it from there. But ultimately you are just going to be dividing by 120 in order to get that first ratio of 1 to 8. Okay, so it doesn't matter which method you use there, ultimately you're going to be doing the same calculation. So there's our second question, let's have a look at our final one. Okay, and so for our final question, we have something a little bit different, and this is strictly a calculator question. And there is a little hint in the question that this is gonna be a calculator one, we'll have a look at that now. So it says, here are two similar solid shapes, and we have shape A and shape B. It says the surface area of shape A to the surface area of shape B is three to four. So the volume of shape B is 10 centimeter cubed, work out the volume of shape A. And here's our hint that it's a calculator question, give your answer to three significant figures. So we are only gonna do this with a calculator, but again, we're gonna discuss two different methods. So having a look at this then, if we take that ratio for the surface area, which we can write over here, and again, let's label it up like we did in the first question, we have A and we have B, and then we are gonna write down our ratio. So at the moment, we've got three to four. Now again, we need to get back to length. So to get back to length, again, to get from area to length, we square root, just like we did in our first question. So we're gonna take the square root of three and the square root of four. Now I'm not, hopefully you've spotted this isn't so nice here. The square root of four is okay, that's two. But the square root of three, we're gonna to have to leave as a third. It's gonna be root three. So we've got a little, bit a little bit of trickiness going on in this question if we were to approach it in this way. Now again, we don't want length, we want to look at volume. So we're gonna to have to move now from length to volume. And to get from length to volume, again, we already know, we cube it. So we're gonna cube both of these. And again, we have a calculator. Two cubed is eight. And then we also need to cube root three. You can do that on the calculator. If you know your thirds, root three times root three is three, times another root three is three root three. Okay, and obviously if you type that into your calculator, three root three comes out as quite a nasty decimal, it's 5.19615, quite a lot of decimals there. So in terms of our volume ratio, these are our two numbers that we have, three root three to eight. And again, if we line these up, we have shape A and we have shape B, and it's given us the volume of shape B, it's 10. Now let's just get rid of that and put our other ratio underneath there instead. So we have three root three to eight as our ratio. And it's given us the volume of shape B, that's 10. Now again, just like before, we wanna figure out how have we got from eight to 10? And we can do that by doing 10 divided by eight. So if we do 10 divided by eight, and again, we have a calculator, but that obviously can be simplified to five over four, or it comes out as 1.25. And again, just check that on your calculator, make sure you're okay with that, so 1.25. So to get from eight to 10, we've multiplied by 1.25, and we're just gonna do the same on the other side, times one, let's get rid of that, that's not come out very well. We're gonna multiply by 1.25. So on your calculator, you can just do three root three, and then times that by 1.25, and we get our answer here, and it comes out as a decimal, it comes out as 6.495, and a few more decimals. I'm gonna leave it there because obviously it wants our answer to three significant figures. So we can round that from there as I've already written it out to four significant figures. So again, if we chop that after our third significant figure, so six, four, nine, there we go. There's a five afterwards, which is always a bit weird when you have to round like this, as it rounds the nine up, which rounds the four up before it. 
So it actually comes out as 6.5, but we have to also keep that zero in there as it does want it to three significant figures and that zero counts as our third significant figure there. Obviously we're looking at volume, so that is centimeter cubed, not forgetting your units. But there we go, there's our final answer, 6.5 centimeter cubed. And that was only one method of doing it. Obviously we could take another approach. So if we get rid of this working out, we'll leave the answer of 6.5 there, but let's just have a look at our other method that we also used in question one. And that is taking that ratio and again doing the big number divided by the little number. And if I keep all of this here, we'll have a look at how we move between them. So again, if I do the big number and divide it by the little number, it's four divided by three. So for our surface area, to get our scale factor, we can do four over three, and that comes out as four thirds. So our surface area scale factor is four thirds. Again, we can move that down to length by square rooting it. So if we do the square root of four thirds, and again, I'm just gonna type that in on the calculator. I'm gonna type in four thirds, and I'm gonna do the square root of the answer and that comes out as quite a nasty number. It comes out, and again, you'll see why I use the other method to start with. It gives us a length scale factor of two root three over three, which is just quite a nasty decimal, 1.1547 and some more numbers there. But that is our length scale factor. And again, we can take that and we can move from length to volume. It's gonna get quite nasty now, but again, we just need to cube that. So I'll cube the answer, put that in a bracket. I'm just gonna press answer cubed on the calculator. And that gives us a volume scale factor here. It comes out as eight root three over nine. And there is our volume scale factor. And again, we can just use that now to move between the shapes. We are going from shape B down to the smaller shape. So we're gonna divide by that scale factor and they give us a volume for the larger shape of 10 centimeter cubed. So we're gonna divide by eight root three over nine obviously doesn't look very nice but it is just a number and 10 divided by that answer gives us an answer again of 6.495 and again you can test those out on your calculator but obviously just showing you there that we can use two different methods obviously if we have a calculator you can always just do the big divided by the little and obviously writing down the scale factor or we can move between the numbers as a ratio and look at it in that particular way but you can take any approach, whichever one you prefer there, lots of different methods, and just showing you there's always multiple ways to solve these problems. But there is our video looking at similar shapes with area and volume when we have some ratios involved. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful, and obviously don't forget to check out the full video on this, which I'll have linked in the description. But if you did find that useful and helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.